And I think that's going. Perfect. Um, so uh, our objectives uh, for this meeting, um, by the end, you should be able to, you're going to understand uh, some of the uh, abilities and limitations of groups in Blackboard. Um, and you'll know how to create and assign group sets. Um, we'll also look at how to grade um, group work uh, and a little bit of how that submission process works for students. We'll, I'll give you a couple of examples of how to build uh, collaborative group projects uh, using the tools. Um, and we'll look at a few other tools that can help assist with that. There are certainly some pieces that are missing um, if you're wanting to do um, kind of large scale group projects. So we'll look at some other tools that we can use um, in collaboration with Blackboard. And then um, you'll have an idea of where to look uh, if you need support or resources uh, moving forward. Uh, so this is just kind of a, another way of saying the same thing. We did the introductions. We'll look at the capabilities and limitations. We'll create group sets. We'll add those to assignments. I'll give you some tips, share some resources, and we will finish up. Uh, there's Feel free to um, unmute at any point if you have questions. I'm happy to stop as we go. We're a small group, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you can also ask them at the end, um, but we will definitely have time for any questions that you have. Um, or if you have specific examples, want to share your screen, we could walk through any challenges that you might be facing already. I'm not going to spend much time on the why. This is much more of a how workshop. Um, we do have uh, more workshops here, and I'm going to share a recording to one of those um, that happened recently um, on the why. But essentially, why might we want to use um, our build-in group work uh, and collaborative projects? Um, one, it helps build student skills, thinking, critical thinking skills, collaboration, communication skills. Um, and two, it really creates more buy-in and kind of positive feelings from students in our courses. Um, I'll, I'll include some links where you can um, dig deeper into that if you're curious as to some of the benefits. Um, but like I said, today we're going to focus mostly on um, the how. Uh, to create specifically with Blackboard. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing this PowerPoint uh, and I'm going to transition to an actual uh, Blackboard shell. Uh, if you don't know this, you can request uh, Blackboard shells, um, which are just like testing grounds or sandboxes um, that you can use. Uh, and you can do that through the tool section. Um, right here, tools, Blackboard faculty tools, and then um, you can request shells here. Uh, and this is a great space to just kind of practice uh, and or build things out that you may want to implement in your courses uh, without them actually being sent out or visible to anyone unless you, you know, choose to do that. So I'll go back to my course. And this is the one. Um, so I built out a few assignments here uh, and we'll we'll kind of use these as a guide as we go. <clears throat> uh, essentially. You can create groups in a variety of ways using the tools in Blackboard. Um, the main limitation that I'll share, and I think is a great starting point, is that uh, it's it's really great. The, the tools that Blackboard has um, are great for uh, creating the groups, making sure students know who they're in, uh, who their group members are. It provides some communication tools, um, and it provides a great spot for you to collect or to distribute information and collect information. Um, where it lacks, the biggest limitation is a real lack of kind of collaborative features um, where students can actually do some of that group collaboration. Um, those are limited within Blackboard. They're mostly limited to uh, the discussion boards. Um, and so if you're wanting them to actually build something together and present, let's say they're building a slide deck or a document, a, a group paper that they're working on, um, a video, any sort of uh, kind of multimedia thing, they're going to have to do that outside of Blackboard um, and then pull that in and share it out uh, or share it with you, at least in, in your Blackboard course. So we'll look at a few tools that you could use uh, in those cases as well. The uh, main page that you see up here in this top toolbar uh, that we're going to use today is groups. And so if you go to groups, this is where you can uh, create and build group sets. You can also do this within assignments. So if I go into... Uh, the self-enroll assignment here, for example, and I either click the three dots and click edit, or if I just say I just created it, if I just go over here and click these uh, settings, I can then scroll down to assign to groups here. And when I click that, I can build out the group sets here as well. So let's say I wanted this one just to be self-enrollment. 
Um, I can just click self-enroll. I can set the number of groups uh, that I want. Let's say, um, this is the, I'm sorry, the number of groups, the, the maximum number of students in a group. Um, I can set those here. And then I can uh, kind of build and rename my groups down here at the bottom by clicking the pencils. Um, if you want to add additional groups, you just click the plus sign and it will, it's going to auto name it the next number, uh, <clears throat> the next number up. Uh, and then you can just click the pencil and name it anything you'd like. With the auto enroll group, when students log in, they will be prompted. I'll go ahead and just show you that since we're here. You can also set enrollment dates in which students have to enroll in a group. And then if that date passes, it'll automatically assign them to one. Um, so let's save here and save. I'm going to go to student preview. Uh, if you don't know this, uh, Blackboard has a preview tool uh, that you can click and create a preview user, uh, which gives you the option or the ability to test out the features. So you'll see here, um, now they'll be, the first thing they have to do is join a group before they can do anything. So they try to open the assignment. They're going to get this red alert that says they have to join a group. Um, and then what they can do is they can just find the group that they want and click join. And now that I'm a part of that group. There's a messaging tool here that they can use to send a message to other members um, in that group. And if there were other people and you so set that as the setting, they could, um, they'll be able to see their, their group members there. And then right now, this group set only has this one assignment. If they have multiple assignments uh, linked to that group set, they'll be able to see all of those assignments in this, what they call the group uh, workspace. Um, so I will back out of here now. I'm going to exit this. Uh, and then as part of that PV tool, if you click Save, it'll save what you have done. Um, and if you click discard, it will delete everything that you did on this version of your student preview and any other time that you've used student preview. So if you're using that to test everything and then you log out one time and hit discard, it will delete all of your student preview stuff, which is useful to know, especially with the self-enrollment, um, that if you have your student preview user uh, created, um, it's possible that people, when people don't sign up for groups, that, pre that preview user is going to be assigned to a group. So there was an example where I was supporting an instructor uh, and we both had a preview user and the groups were four people and both of our preview users got assigned to a group of four people. So they, they had a group that was half the size of everyone else in reality. Um, so something to pay attention to. Um, I'm going to save for this. Well, I'm going to go back to groups here. So um, back here to creating your group sets, you can import group sets if you have um, CSV files. Uh, that's kind of beyond the scope of this. If that's something that you're interested in doing, you can message me and we can we can work on building that out. Uh, but in this case, you'll just click this plus sign for creating a new group set. And then you have three types. You have the self-enroll, which we just looked at. Uh, you have custom um, and you have randomly assigned. So randomly assigned, it will automatically place people in the groups. Uh, and if you have custom, you get to add them to whichever group that you want. So we'll build out uh, one group set for each of those. So we'll do a random assign. Uh, and then we won't change the names for this one. We'll just leave them as is. And you can see it's placed all of the users uh, in a group, including uh, my preview user, which in this case is good because um, it's going to help me when I try to show you something in a second. And then if I want to make them visible, I can make them visible. You can make these hidden and they can only see the people in their group. Uh, it's up to you. And then if I click down, uh, you can now message. When you're here, if you want to message a group, an individual group, you can use this uh, feature here to send a message directly to the members of that group. If you want to edit it, you can click the three dots out here and click edit and go from there. And you can also move uh, students around so if you click the three dots out to the right of someone's name, you can and uh, just click a different group and it will move that user into the other group. All right, so we'll save that one. And then we will do one more, the plus sign. This one will do a custom group. Uh, 
Uh, let's just make this one two. Just rename them really quick. You can add a group description if that's something that you uh, would like to do. Um, if you have a large class, if you're looking at, um, you know, say you have a large, I don't know, a couple hundred students or 150 students, you can adjust the number that you can see at a time here, uh, which might make your life a little easier. Um, but any unassigned student will appear up here at the top. So even if you have a large group, you'll know who's not assigned because they'll still be up in the top. Um, and there's two ways to add them into a group. You can click the three dots next to one and select a group and it will automatically drop them in. Or if you click uh, several at the same time, then you can follow that. It'll highlight them in black. Then you can follow that same process of um, just choosing a group to put them in. Like that. So now we have our groups created and we hit save. Uh, and here I have two available groups who, group sets that I can use now. And I can use these on any assignment that I'm teaching uh, or, or offering um, in this course. So now that they're, that they're already built out, I don't have to do it again if I want to use the same groups. If you want to create a different group for every assignment, you can do that as well. And uh, that might be easier to do from within the, the actual assignment if you're going to do it that way. Uh, any questions on that, on creating the group sets? OK, if you do, just uh, jump in the chat or unmute and let me know. Um, if you want to delete a group set, you can also click these three dots out here to the right and click Delete, uh, and it will delete that group set. All right, for now, um, most people that are going to use the group pool are going to use it either in discussions or in group assignments. You can also make a group test. That's tricky because uh, if they're not sitting together or finding some way to collaborate online, um, let's say you were using a breakout room, breakout rooms in Zoom, uh, like Brandon said, um, you could assign this and they could work on that together. But they really only make one. They really they only make one submission. Um, and so if it's a group test and they're not doing it together, only one person is, <laughs> is doing the test. So uh, that might not be the best use case. Uh, it's worth noting that one submission will cover the entire group. Um, so most people are going to use it for assignments or um, discussions or a combination of those. So if we're in an assignment, um, here's my assignment that I've created. Uh, I'm going to go again over here to the settings wheel, and I'm going to go down, and I'm going to click uh, under this assessment security. I'm going to assign to groups, and I'll just pick the uh, Randomly assigned groups here, that's fine. And then I'm going to click Save. Uh, you can, again, you can adjust any of the settings that you want as far as how you score it, the attempts and all of that. Hit Save here. And that is now live and linked to the groups. So uh, from a student perspective, students will go in. Um, they can click, again, they can click up here at groups and they can see this group set that was uh, made visible to them and they can see uh, the members of their group there. I'll go back to the content, go into the assignment. And also when they open it, they'll have the group members listed here. They'll start an attempt. Um, this is Where they'll submit their response. Uh, if you didn't know, Blackboard has recently changed the assignment tool. In the past, the test tool and the assignment tool were pretty much the same. Um, now the assignment tool does not allow questions. So uh, you can't like click the plus sign and add true, false, multiple choice, open-ended questions. Um, in the uh, using assignments, you'd have to use tests. Um, in assignments, they just get this text editor and they can um, either type in the response, they can link a response, or they can uh, upload a document in this way. Uh, but for this, we'll just click um, submission, or we'll just type something in here, and then we'll click submit. And again, if they want to communicate with their group, there's messaging features here on the side. We're going to click submit. 
Uh, there's a receipt. And now that has been submitted. That will be the submission for the group. Other members are not able to go in and open this now or edit it or resubmit unless you've allowed for multiple attempts. Um, that can be confusing, uh, and it's probably worth making that clear to the group members. Um, so for example, if I exit and save, uh, and I go in from the instructor perspective, if I click on submissions, I now have one attempt to grade, and that's going to give me the response for the group. Uh, if I enter a grade here, let's say I gave it a 90, um, and I can put in uh, feedback here. Here you can do feedback for the entire group, or if you want to do individual feedback, um, you can work through each individual student. You'll see the name change um, there. So you can give group feedback and individual feedback here, um, or if you click this drop down, kind of the same deal. And I'm going to post that. And now if I go into the grade book, um, uh, this one here. And click grades, all of the students were, in this case, received the same grade. You can do an override. Let's say there was a, you had students evaluate each other and not all of them received the same score. You can then go in and override. Um, for an individual student, it gives you a warning there. When I, when I typed that in, it asked me if I wanted to assign it to the whole group. I said no, uh, and that, so that changed the grade for those students. <clears throat> Uh, you can do that. You could enter that grade through here if you chose from the beginning as well. Um, but you have the ability to alter the grade for a single student if uh, or or assign each individual student a separate grade to if you if you choose to go that route. Uh, one other thing to note. If a student has an accommodation, so if you've set an accommodation on your pay uh, for students in your course, so if you went into the roster, uh, and here I set a due date accommodation for Millard Fillmore, any group that he's in, all of the students will be granted that same accommodation through Blackboard. So if they have a, an extended time um, or due date accommodation, that whole group will receive that accommodation on Blackboard. So if it had a due date of today, uh, but they had that due date that one student had that due date accommodation, Blackboard wouldn't automatically issue a zero, for example, if that's a setting that you had uh, selected. So worth noting, and you'll notice this by the little purple flag out next to the student. Um, like I said, you could do, you can ass group assign tests as well, uh, the same process. Assign to groups. To the random groups in this case and save. And then when the student goes in here and takes that test, all of the students received the score for the, the one test. So like I said, if you're going to do use the test feature, um, just know that it's one if one student's going to actually submit that group test. So if they're meeting in person, for example, and you have them do it, you know, working in actual physical groups, um, you might use that group feature on the test. Or if um, you know they're collaborating in an online breakout room, for example, that might be another time that you would use that feature. Um, but I think for the most people in general, it's not something that you would use on just any kind of random assignment. Any questions uh, from here? Yeah, I've got a quick question, Kevin. Yeah, um, go ahead. 
would this be a good way to so in some of my classes when I have honors sections, I have, you know, honor students who are doing, you know, I guess additional assignments that the other non honor students don't have to do. Would yes. this be a good way to do that? Absolutely. Okay. So um, I, that's what I have here. So I have I said in this example, I created a folder, um, but this could be an assignment as well. Or maybe you have like the honor students okay. have their own module or folder. Okay. Um, but it's the same type of deal. You can uh, go out to the right and click edit. No, you can't. Uh, let me see how I did this. But I, I know how to do it. Um, so if you want to assign a whole folder to a group of students, you can use release conditions and release those conditions to a group. Um, or you could do each individual item within there. So in that in that case, if you click uh, here where it says visible and you click release conditions, um, here you can click specific member um, or group. And then you can search by group. And you know, the, let's say that's my honors group. I would have created that group set. Um, and then I can just hit save. And now only they have access to that that folder. Now, but I would I want to test this because I I haven't actually tested it. If I have assignments in that folder, mm -hmm. would they be visible to the other students? Are That's... they? I, or would they be visible in the grade book? Because they won't see it on right. the main page. But will they okay. be impacted on that? I would want to test that beforehand yeah. uh, okay. before I give you a definitive answer there. Okay. So it may be worth doing it if it's just a few assignments, okay. just using that group and assigning it that Sounds way. Um, yep. Great question though. Uh, so yeah, so that that in that case, you might see it with honors. Sometimes people will teach a course that's uh, graduate and undergraduate students, um, or maybe you have like tutors in your course and they have access, or TAs and they have access to different resources. Uh, you might use this feature there where you put them in a group and and then they can access uh, some information that others can't. You know, let's actually, uh, I'll test that at the end. Um, the next one is discussions. Uh, so this is a, a use case here is if you have a, a giant class and, and you have dozens of students, uh, one discussion post might become uh, very crowded very quickly. And so you can break that into groups and then you can view each group's uh, responses and reply to each of the groups without replying to everyone in the course. So uh, if you create the discussion, uh, and again, if you're if you're uh, newer to Blackboard, everything that you create, you do with these little purple plus signs. Uh, they used to not appear. You had to hover and find them, uh, but now they appear uh, between every item. So you just click create uh, and then select discussions here. Close it out. Um, and then once you're open, you can go into the settings. And again, down here, you have assigned to groups. So let's pick this one and save. Uh, if you want to grade discussions, uh, make sure that you actually check that box before you assign it or right when you assign it, uh, just to avoid some confusion down the road. Um, I'll just hit save here. And then now you can see that uh, I have my three groups. I can see who's uh, in each group, I'll be able to, any responses would appear here. Uh, and so I could track them. And then I can also contribute uh, or participate in those discussions as well. So it's fairly simple to kind of bounce around uh, with these little drop down arrows once they're created. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can also follow discussions now, uh, which was a feature that was added sometime in the last two months. Um, you just click this little bell here. Um, and then you can go into your notification settings. Uh, to adjust when you actually receive notifications. But if you click follow, um, you'll get some sort of either email or um, alert through your uh, your kind of Blackboard uh, landing page there, depending on what settings that you have. Um, change that there. Um, yeah, and that's and that, that's pretty straightforward. You just bounce around to the groups and comment. And then if it's graded, you would just grade them Kind of the same uh, as before. This won't it won't do a group grade like the group assignments do, um, but you'll have that page that that tab here where you would, you could actually go through and add the grades for the students. 
So those are the main two uh, discussions and assignments that I think most people would use uh, in a typical course. If you're planning a, uh, a project, uh, it's useful, I think, to combine those um, given the lack of ability to collaborate uh, within the tools in Blackboard. So um, what I would do, uh, and this would this will be my, if you contacted us and said, I want to build a group project, um, how can I set that up? Um, what I would do is the following. I would create the assignment and I would assign that to groups. And then I would also create a discussion that goes along with that assignment and assign that to the same groups. Uh, and then that gives them a space where they can uh, communicate on the topic. They can post resources there. Uh, you can follow along, you can contribute, you can provide them guidance or feedback. Um, and then they'll have, again, the directions from the assignment sheet, and then they'll have a space to upload those directions. So that might look like um, this here. So I have my assignment here, and I have, uh, I don't think I assigned it to groups. Assigned to groups, and I'll just put them in a random one and save. And so now all those group members have access to the assignment sheet. Again, one, only one of them will actually be able to submit. And then in that same folder, I would put a discussion um, like this. I would assign it to the same groups. And then now they have that discussion page and the um, discussion page and the uh, assignment kind of in one spot where they can access it. There, there's also a group page. Um, so if, if you're the instructor and you want to go into their group space, if you open up the group set and you click the three dots out here to the right of that group, you can enter that group space. And this one doesn't have assignments attached. Must be in the wrong one. Well, typically, I'm not, it's not linking for some reason, but typically you could go in here and you could see those um, content items that are in, that have been assigned to uh, that group. Let me see if I go to student preview, if I can see them. Mm. I think nothing is assigned, but um, typically that shows up. I'm not sure why that's not. It looks like there's a bug happening at the moment or I'm missing something here. Um, we'll skip over that piece. But uh, they have these two. There we go. Here's my group project folder from a student point of view. Um, and they can, again, they can participate in a discussion and they can um, then upload their post here. Uh, and this is where I'm gonna branch out of Blackboard for a few minutes um, to look at some other tools that you might use to help build that collaborative piece. Uh, the first would be any sort of um, uh, video conferencing tool that you use. So we're on Teams today. Um, you may also use Zoom. Um, both of those you can use with your NIU account and I'll, every student can as well. Uh, you could dictate what they use or you could just say, arrange this yourself. Uh, if you make meetings, you could have them share that link in the chat, and then you could access that if you'd like. Um, but uh, there's another one that we use sometimes, which is uh, Class Collaborate, which you'll see in your Blackboard courses over here to the right. The challenge with that is uh, students can't create uh, their own sessions in Class Collaborate. So they could use the course room, but if two or three groups tried to meet at the same time, they might end up in the they would they would end up in the same course room. Um, which could cause some challenges. So uh, I would discourage using Collaborate for that and would much more encourage um, Teams or, or Zoom, whatever you use in your course. Uh, 
that's, a, that's probably a better option there. Um, and if you need support with any of that, again, you can reach out to me or, or the office here and we can help get you set up on that end. Um, another benefit of using Teams is that they can actually create a team. They can use the chat feature and build a chat with each other. You could ask them to invite you uh, to that if you would prefer. Um, they can share files that way, and then they can set up their meetings uh, and use the video conferencing tools. Uh, and then it also uh, integrates with some of the, uh, a little bit better with some of the Microsoft features. So uh, Whiteboard, for example, uh, is a collaborative space, a digital whiteboard uh, that they can share, and they can use that to build out resources, and they could paste in images or video clips or um, websites or articles that they want to use. They could build that out in a using Google Whiteboard, which they can then share with uh, one another. Um, other Microsoft products uh, would be Word, Excel, PowerPoint. All of those have the students have access to uh, the Microsoft suite, and they have the ability to share and build collaborative documents. And I'll open one and show you how. Um, so here I just created an assignment. Um, you could, you potentially could set these up yourself if you wanted to. Uh, if you had two or three groups, this might be something you're interested in. If you have 15 or 20 groups, probably not because it would be an individual uh, document for each of those groups that you would have to set up. Um, what I would do is what, if I wanted to monitor what they're working on collaboratively, I would ask as part of the assignment, one step of the assignment is to create a collaborative document and share it in the group discussion. And then you can open and access it there uh, and just have them add you as a um, with the ability to either view or edit. Uh, but what you do is you just go up here in the upper right hand corner and click share. Uh, and then there are a couple of things you can do if you click share like this. It'll load. Sometimes the pop ups don't load. Uh, are you able to see this pop the share pop up window? Yes. Perfect. Um, so you students could add uh, individuals by name or email address here and set their permissions or um, they can click this little wheel next to copy link, and then they can set it to anyone with the link, anyone at NIU, um, and then they can set privileges of what they can do and apply. So let's say I said anyone with this link can use it. I can set a password if I wanted it to be a little bit more secure uh, or an expiration date. I can choose again if they edit, view, download, review, whatever I want, and then apply, and then copy link. And now they can go back into uh, this you know, group uh, project discussion, and they can paste that link in. I did copy it. Um, they can copy it and paste it in there, and then the other students could access that collaborative document. Um, and again, you can do all of the Microsoft Suite use this, so PowerPoint, Excel, Word, um, and then they can kind of build their plan together. A lot of the students uh, are going to come to your course with Chromebooks um, and experience using the Google Suite. And it's the same It's the same process. So they could create a Google Doc and share it the exact same way. Um, because we're a Microsoft campus, I'm not going to go into Google. But if you have questions on that, I can help you with that as well. Um, they can share that in here. They could add users. And then they can build their assignment there when, when they're finished. Um, they can decide which user is going to go in and submit that as the group uh, final uh, final submission. Um, there's one other tool that we have um, that they can use to collaborate, and that is uh, the Adobe Creative Campus. Um, so we are now um, trying to remember the title. We have access to Adobe Creative Campus, uh, the with the second university in the in the state to to have this. Um, the easiest tool for them to use is um, Adobe Express, which is it, it allows them to build a lot of different uh, types of documents. So they could make posters, they could make infographics, they could make presentations, they can make websites. Um, they can share and collaborate on those together, and then they can share the final project uh, with you or with the class. Uh, and so a quick plug for that. I'll just give you an example. My, I have a four-year-old who's right now very much into like superhero dogs, but he has a fish. So I created this little superhero fish for him. Um, and if I wanted to share this with my group and have them, um, this was AI generated, uh, have them 
contribute or edit this together, or let's say this was a presentation instead, I can just go up here to share. Uh, and then you can enter their information in here, and there'll be a pop down. Uh, and so let's say this is the person I wanted to add. I could just click their name, add them in. Uh, and then now they have the ability to edit this as well, uh, and they can build this out together. A lot of students uh, coming out of high school probably are going to have more experience with um, Canva because it, it has free options, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of secondary schools use that. Um, but anything you can do in that, you can do uh, in Adobe Express as well, and uh, we, have, we, have it, we have access to it. So uh, it, it's pretty powerful. There's a lot of things that they could do um, depending on the type of project that you want. And so they might use that and they can, again, they can collaborate on that. They can share that in that group discussion. Um, and then they can submit their final project through the project submission. In this case, they might submit a link, uh, which then you could access <coughs> to, um, to assess their work. Oh. Wait, quickly, let me see if there's something I'm skipping. No, nope, I think that's it. Um, so quick recap, let me get out of this. You can create uh, three types of groups. Uh, you can randomly assign them. You can customly add, custom uh, create groups that you add. You choose which students are in which groups um, and you can uh, have them auto or self-select. Um, you can assign them to assignments and discussions. Uh, some of the other features as well, but those are the main two. You can use the release conditions to provide uh, access to specific groups. Um, and then I've covered a couple of extra tools that you might use to build out um, kind of more robust collaboration experiences for your students. Any questions on any of that before I jump into the resources? Great. Um, so there are a number of resources that you can access. Uh, we're here. Um, there's somebody on campus every day, multiple people here in the office. If you want to come in and have an in-person uh, consultation, you can also call us or email us um, or go to our website and schedule. Um, you can enter information there or you can schedule a meeting there as well. Uh, and somebody will be able to support you with kind of your teaching and learning needs. Um, I'm going to include a blog post here from my colleague, Lynn Nguyen, um, and also a recording of a workshop that goes along the same lines as that, which is about inclusive group assignments and fostering teamwork. Um, uh, there are a ton of resources that she's included in this blog post as well that you might uh, take a look at. There are support sites, uh, our website, we have a, a teaching and learning with Blackboard site here at CIDL um, that you can use uh, our guides and tutorials on. Uh, and Blackboard itself also has help pages for instructors and for students, uh, and I've linked those in here um, as well. If you have ideas um, for improvements to Blackboard, you can always reach out to us and let us know, and we can share them. Uh, but Blackboard also has an idea exchange um, where you can go on, you can create a, an account, and you can look at the features that other people are interested in having uh, added to or created uh, for Blackboard. Um, they, Blackboard issues a fairly significant release every month um, that has uh, a variety of new changes, uh, kind of depending on, on where they are at the moment. But um, most of those ideas uh, come from the idea exchange. So there are things that users have asked for and voted on. Um, just you can, you can see the ideas, and then you can upvote them, um, and you can leave comments. Uh, most of those changes have come from uh, this idea exchange. There's a new release. They, they, I'm sorry, there's a new update at the beginning of every month, the first Thursday of every month. Uh, we release a video on that here uh, at, at CIDL and our website. Um, we try to keep that up to date as well on the new uh, changes that are coming about. But if you have ideas related to features you want in groups or anything else in Blackboard, uh, I would highly recommend going on there, uh, looking to see if someone else has proposed it. And if not, you can. Um, propose it or vote it up if someone else has already put it out there. 
Um, and then we also offer a variety of workshops each month um, on a wide range of topics related to teaching and learning. Uh, and I'm going to include the link to our website that has uh, the spot to register for those workshops as well. Uh, and again, um, you can uh, reach us through our website, uh, cital.niu.edu. Um, those workshops are on there as well. Um, and I'm sorry, it's niu.edu slash cital. Uh, and you can email us at cital at niu.edu, or you can email me at kevin.harris at niu.edu. And uh, we can help get, you know, solve any issues that you're currently working on or help you develop any sort of ideas or uh, programming that you're hoping to build for your students. Uh, if you don't have questions, uh, or if you do, I'm going to end the recording, uh, and you can feel free to stick around and ask them. Um, if you need clarification on anything or have any kind of specific, uh, any any questions or concerns specific to your courses, uh, I'm happy to support with that. But thank you very much for attending, and we hope to see you at uh, more of these.